All right. So today we're talking to Rudy Antor from Hello <laughs> from Languistal International, which is a language enterprise that was created in 2015. Correct. That's very correct. Nice to nice to thanks for having me. No problem. And through Languistal International, you provide solutions for language and learning, but a little bit later on, you'll tell us a little bit more about Languistal and the services that you offer. I wanted to start off, as usual, by getting to know you a little bit better. So maybe you can just give me a brief background of who Jodi Lillian is. Sure. Rodi Ann Thorpe, the name, uh, Jamaican born, Jamaican raised. Um, I have been living, however, in France for uh, almost 10 years. <laughs> Um, which means, well, I actually came to France um, as part of a uh, exchange program, if we can call it, an inter-university program where I pursued political science um, in Bordeaux, France, which is in the south. Then I went to Martinique in the French Caribbean, back to University of the West Indies, where I completed my studies. Um, I came back to France actually uh, to teach, so I've been teaching English as a foreign language. So I definitely have had that passion for language for a while. Um, I continue to teach uh, in addition to pursuing my PhD in higher education policy. So I've been doing quite a bit of things um, in addition to Long Soul, which as you said, I started in 2016 um, after I realized that there was quite the lack in the Caribbean space in terms of exchanges. Um, I wanted to provide that opportunity for mobility uh, between Caribbean residents, whether it's from the French Caribbean, the Spanish speaking Caribbean, and or island of Jamaica, as well as other Eastern Caribbean islands. Awesome. So, Could you repeat that, please? No, I'm saying you're doing a lot. It has been quite a remarkable. <laughs> so that's a great thing. I always love to, you know, talk to forward-thinking persons, women in particular. You know. So tell us about um, Languistar. Was formed because you saw that there was lacking in terms of how we interact countries who speak languages outside of the words, right? Um, sure. Specifically about Jamaica, but I know it's not just about Jamaica, as you rightly said. So to just, just throwing on a little bit more of, um, maybe you could start by saying what your mission and mission is. Right? right. So, sure. In terms of Long Soul International, the name um, Long Soul, it comes from the French, which means languages, and the soul in the name means solution. So as you had alluded to earlier, the tagline is providing professional solutions uh, for language learning. Um, in terms of how I got started in the first place, it was when I was in a French speaking context, which was in Martinique. And um, I had interacted with a few persons who were interested in organizing language trips to the United States. And of course I facilitated these exchange programs, but I found it a bit shocking at the same time that they would travel all the way to the US as opposed to neighboring Caribbean islands such as Jamaica where I'm from. Um, and I just realized that there are countries that are really dominating the language travel industry while we have countries like Jamaica, Trinidad, et cetera, who are, which are English speaking countries. And, you know, it's, it's just a pity that they had to go that far um, to, you know, affect, uh, to affect their language travel. So that was basically the reason behind creating Longsville International, trying to provide that solution, uh, make building that bridge for Caribbean nationals, uh, because even though, uh, France and, um, sorry, uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe, they are French countries, um, as in the nationals actually have the French nationality. They are in a Caribbean space. So the mission basically is to provide that, you know, go towards a world where language barriers are no longer um, a, a thing of the, a problem of the present. So to allow people to learn languages, but not only to learn languages, but to have cultures come together and for people to familiarize themselves. Okay, okay, sounds good. So pretty much you were, and this was when you were in Jamaica, you were doing this, right? 
Oh, no, I was in Martinique at the time, so still in college. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you were in Martinique, but you were saying that you want it to be a destination also. Absolutely. That, that, that was it. And yes, that's it. And take on to that, was, was that a success? Was your pitch a success? So I was fortunate enough to score a, a collaborative deal with uh, persons in Martinique and Guadeloupe who partnered with the French Civil Aviation Authority. So back in the French Caribbean, we had uh, pilots and air traffic controllers who um, generally on the job, they had maybe English tutors come into their offices uh, to you know, help them to learn English a little better. Um, but we were able, we were very successful to have these persons go to Jamaica for the immersion aspect of their language learning experience. So yes, it, it, we, we were able to, to get that done. Awesome. So how, how the response? And we started in 2016, but how has the response in terms of person who would like to travel to another country from Jamaica, for example? or from where you are now in France to Jamaica, and also from the country aspect of it, the government aspect of it, how was that? Do you do so, involved in your process, or? This is completely a private entity, so for the time being, uh, we are not government funded. Uh, we would like to get some persons on board because at the end of the day, the aim of Long Soul International is to promote Jamaica as a language travel destination, and especially with the current context with the pandemic, where the government is seeking to reboost um, and restart the tourism industry and the travel industry. Language travel should definitely still be um, a, a concern. Um, it should definitely still be something that people should seek to pursue. So that's also in terms of getting the government on board. That's uh, a goal. That's a, that's a desire, a strong desire. Um, in terms of the response, um, well, we've been fortunately we've been fortunate to have uh, some sort of awareness being raised, especially among university students. Uh, for example, in the past, we've had persons from the University of the West Indies uh, whose language trips to France we've organized. Um, there are other persons who are unemployed as well. The persons who are retired, there is no limit, uh, who wanted maybe just to have a little excursion post-retirement. Uh, we were able to facilitate these requests, um, as well as persons who are non-French, sorry, non-Jamaicans. Um, so we, we've been able to sort of launched out outside of the Jamaican context to persons who are non-Jamaicans who seek our services in organizing language trips. Okay, that sounds good. So it simply means that I hear you mention persons who are retired. So as much as your focus is on forging um, the links between the two countries that speak different um, languages, also you just facilitate um, vacation trips, do you do that? Are there other services that you provide outside of your main focus of um, language? Uh, in terms, well, that's the, for us in terms of vacation trips, um, the idea, well, maybe I should start by the, the describing the programs. So each program, we try to make them have at least three main components, such as language lessons, uh, excursions, and um, accommodation with a host family. So these are the three main components. But let's say somebody is fluent already and they just want to have uh, the immersion experience where they don't go to a class. That first component of language lessons, we can definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely custom made so we can uh, arrange for there probably just to be excursions. The idea is for the person to be in the country and to practice the language. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that traditional experience of going to class, etc. If people go to France and they want to be on vacation, so we definitely facilitated the idea and the vision and the perspective is that you are in the country to practice your language. Okay. Yeah, because I'm. I mean, I'm asking for myself. <laughs> if I don't want to learn. It's not. A, it's not. It's not something that I would want to take on at this point. Or maybe I should. You never know. <laughs> you never know. To have the experience of being in France and also to a limited extent learn the language, then you will do that. So it's yes. focused only on college students or retired persons 
somebody who just wants to do something on the spur of a moment can call you right. up and you can make the arrangements. Right. I mean, it, it all comes down to, especially where language learning is, my my perspective generally, my personal opinion is that it all comes down to your desire. So whether you're 12 years old or you're 65, as long as you're w willing to learn and you're interested, then go for it. Okay. Awesome. So we spoke a little bit about the fact that um, you, you, you are not looking in the direction of like governmental assistance with your program as yet. So I figured, well, I don't know if I should say as yet. Is that one of the challenges that you face? And if it is, what are some of the other challenges that you, you, you experience? Right. So what, one of the main differences I find um, from dealing with the French, uh, French public as opposed to a Jamaican uh, setup is where the French system also, they have things in place where employees or students, they can get grants just to go overseas to practice a language. Perhaps universities have these things in place in Jamaica. Um, but to my knowledge, this, there is that main contrast between the French government or French society and Jamaican society uh, mm -hmm. where people can actually just apply for these grants or uh, maybe if you work a certain, um, yeah, this is a fact, it's called CPS. So for example, if somebody works for uh, a year or something like that, I'm giving some rough figures, then they're entitled for like a week where they can go off to be trained, whether in a foreign language or whatever they want. So there are things like that that are set up, which facilitates, yeah, that facilitates mobility, especially from French, from, from for French persons going to Jamaica. So that's some of the things I would love to see uh, for the government to put in place, which would encourage persons to go overseas um, to, you know, just bank to, to profit from these experiences. Um, because one of the main difficulties you'll realize is funding. There are not a lot of persons who can well, already travel in the Caribbean region is quite difficult. Uh, I remember just getting to Martinique and I had to go to Miami first, then Puerto Rico, and then uh, Martinique. So travel, of course, in itself, and I guess that's one of the main deterrents why um, persons don't really get that opportunity to go overseas. Um, so that's one of the things, if there were more investment in, you know, mobility schemes like this. Uh, in Europe, for example, you have Erasmus. So maybe if in the Caribbean space, we can have more persons or more opportunities like that for students or for other persons who are interested in mobility. So that's one of the main challenges, uh, having not necessarily for us, but for the general public, for them to have access to mobility uh, funding like this. Um, and then for us in the same time, um, it would be the services we provide there for it. So I guess it impacts us in, in terms of we can't readily um, promote certain destinations as we would like. For example, it is easy for someone from Martinique or from Guadeloupe to go to Jamaica because they don't need a visa. Uh, we would love to start, well, we have been promoting Martinique and Guadeloupe as language travel destinations as well for Jamaicans. But for them to get a visa, the process is a bit, you know, um, it's a bit restrictive. So that, that's one of the main challenges in terms of the visa restrictions uh, for Jamaicans. So if ever the governments could come together and say, okay, if you guys want to go on a mobility uh, excursion or something, it would really help. Okay, awesome. So I'm listening to you and because I feel like you are offering a really great, um, your platform is really great in terms of, you know, how you can... I don't know, increase the level of education where our children are concerned, um, give them the kind of exposure that would allow them to, I don't know, become more assertive, more, you know, display their leadership qualities, that kind of yes. thing. Um, so I, I think that your platform is great. Thank and you. I believe, and why I'm asking you so much about the government is because I really, really would want that kind of collaboration to be forged for Languasol. Right? Thank you. And um, so my question to you is, if you were to do a pitch 
so to speak. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot. <laughs> what would be, what would you say the advantage of a child going to another country to learn a new language? What, what would it do for them so that, you know, the government can see why it is that you went out and did your uh, company with that kind of um, focus? Right, so the, this all goes back to the benefits of language travel. And um, maybe a few of the, the key things I could readily throw because these are stuff that are dear to me, especially for as somebody who has been overseas on, uh, on, on a language travel, um, uh, in a language travel context. And one of the main things is the long-term benefits, uh, especially where personal development is, is concerned. I remember I, was, I basically went overseas all by myself uh, which meant that I developed eventually a sense of autonomy. Um, I was able to be more responsible. I was all by myself. So these are qualities that whenever you have, for, if you want to make people um, be world-class citizens, just get them overseas to get them exposed to another culture, uh, to be able to adapt, um, et cetera. So I think those are the one, that, one of the main things, personal development, um, that, that people stand to benefit from it. Uh, if you are able to develop yourself um, personally and professionally, then guess what? You become more marketable. Um, because number one, you will be able to say that you're bilingual. So a language mastery is going to be key, especially now when the government, I think, has been pushing, I think, Spanish um, as you know, a language that people should uh, also learn in Jamaica. So marketability, um, which therefore leads to employability, because not only do you have all these qualifications, uh, you can show that you work in an environment that is diverse. Uh, you can accomplish different tasks because you have been in different contexts. You've been able to mingle, you know, around people who you're not necessarily comfortable with. So as in the skills. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So all these relational skills and stuff, uh, you definitely stand to benefit. I, I think my, I think that's a lot. I owe a lot about my personalities and the things that I've been able to accomplish through my experiences overseas in a non-English speaking context. Okay, awesome. Um, has COVID nineteen affected your operations in any way? Um, absolutely, because it's at the end of the day, Longsol is a language travel entity. So with world travel being halted uh, or immersion programs, as we have promoted them, unfortunately have not been able to take place. In fact, at the end of this month, there was supposed to be a trip planned from, Jam uh, from Jamaica to France. Uh, there were trips planned to Spain as well, including persons from Chad on the African continent. So there were trips that unfortunately were uh, canceled because of COVID-19. Um, so we're eagerly preparing for the post-COVID, so we're looking forward to the recovery aspect of it. Um, but in the meantime, we were happy to be able to adapt a little bit, um, where of course we, um, we weren't able to offer these um, immersion experience physically, but we were able to offer online classes where persons could integrate a classroom in different parts of the world. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, because that should have been a follow-up question. I, I mean, it was a weird question. Of course, it has affected you because it's you, you, you're on your foundation. Well, you deal with travel, so of course. Yes, but, but the follow-up should have been: What are some of the things that you have done to help um, mitigate that kind of downturn in your business? What you explained in terms of the fact yes. that online classes and so on. So that's great. So, okay, so we have talked a lot about language arts. So I want to know, outside of language arts, I know you're doing your PhD currently. You're also teaching. Is there anything else that you're involved in? Oh, <laughs> no, uh, this is a part I don't like to talk about myself very much, but um, I have had the, um, the honor of um, being elected to run as, sorry, not even to run, but to occupy the post of Vice President um, in a diaspora organization here. So I'm the Vice President of the Jamaican, uh, Jamaican Nationals in France. So as Vice President, a few of my responsibilities include um, everything that's internal. So in terms of portfolio management, um, anything that deals with French law and all the intricacies of that, uh, 
um, as well as, you know, sponsorship and stuff like that, that falls under my, my portfolio. I don't think we heard clearly what the organization was though. Sure. So it's, it's affectionately called Jam in France or the Association of Jamaican Nationals in France. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, and what do you do in terms of self-care? I have to ask you that. Well, in addition to doing my nails. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> No, um, I, in terms of self-care, I, I try to challenge myself a little bit. I have always loved music. Um, so uh, two years ago, I believe, I took up the challenge of learning to play the guitar, um, which I just, honestly, I woke up one day, I was like, I should play the guitar. <laughs> so I got a guitar on, uh, from online, and I pulled up a few YouTube videos, and I'm playing the guitar. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if this is a sign for me. I don't know. <laughs> because you know what? My son, we bought him a bass guitar some time ago. Okay. And he did not do anything with it. Oh no. So that guitar is sitting here new. And I've been thinking to myself, should I? Yes. Yes. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that's a sign for me too, you know, to go yes. to YouTube and try and. See. And that's it. There, I there's so many there's so many resources available on YouTube, that's and true. and there's a, even a little project that I'll I realize I'll probably start some DIY you know things, just you know to um, occupy myself because I'm still social distancing. <laughs> So um, definitely in terms of self-care, just finding little hobbies and stuff um, outside of work, just stuff like that, DIY, playing, learning to play the guitar, it's definitely crucial to keeping a balance. So you mentioned earlier that um, you went to France by yourself. Are you naturally that type of person to just go um, and do what you need to do and not be concerned by the fact that you won't have family support around you? Um, it, I became that person because I, I think I was, and believe it or not, I, I still have um, a degree of shyness. Um, so I think I just became that person eventually. I mean, when I was younger, people didn't believe because I was pretty active in the church. I sang in the choir. I, I you know, would go up in front of people. Um, but then I realized that I would hesitate a lot in terms of opportunities. And I think it's my dad who one day, when I got the opportunity to go to, to France, um, I asked my dad, so dad, am I gonna go? He's like, what do you mean, are you gonna go? Um, and then he, he told me this story, which I tell, I tell everybody this story. My dad says, imagine a bald head um, or a man with a receding hairline or something, and he only has a small patch at the, uh, on his forehead, which means the very soon that's gonna go, so you need to grab on to that patch while it's still there. And literally, as funny as it sounds, it's so clear, the message, like once you get the opportunity, go for it. So going to France and my dad pushing me like that, definitely afterwards, I just became that person that says, the opportunity is here, can I do it? I'm not gonna stress about it. Okay, it's done. That's good, and, and here we are 10 years later, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is it like though when you compare it to Jamaica? I mean, is that where you think that you will stay or do you want to go back to Jamaica? Okay. Well, I've always heard that the life is so nice and fun in France. What is it what yes. is it for you? Um, well, I still, this is a response I, I always tell people is that um, I consider myself a citizen of the world which essentially means wherever the opportunity is, as we talked about, um, I'll, I'll go well. If, if it's the right time, I, I'll definitely take, up, take it up. Um, but I do admit that I do consider France my home as much as I consider Jamaica my home. Um, but I, can't, I live my life as it comes, to be honest. Um, I'm happy to be in a position to do that because I, I really believe that things will work out. Um, so it's difficult to answer with like where I see myself after living, but I just am happy where I am. France has been good to me. Okay, that sounds good. All right, what, what kind of advice do you have? How old are you, by the way? Do you mind me asking you that? 
I don't. I don't. I'm very proud to announce that I'm 29. Okay, so you're 29. What kind of advice do you have to give to other women within your age group about life in general, maybe about your journey as an entrepreneurship, your journey just going off by yourself, whatever it comes to mind? What would you like to say to them? Right. So one of the main things, one of the best advice that um, or the most recent rather, um, because I've had a lot of great advice, um, is the one given from the most recent uh, Miss Universe from South Africa. And in her speech, one of the things she said was to take up space. And I think that resonated with me because there are so many areas where um, it's either male dominated or um, you probably are doubting yourself or something like that. Maybe it, it hasn't even, ex the, the, the opportunity hasn't existed because they need somebody to create it. So my, my advice would definitely be to take up, they'll use her advice to take up the space. If you see that there is a lack, if there is a niche in an industry that you can fill, uh, if you get the inspiration to do something, do not doubt yourself, go for it. Uh, somebody else will do it <laughs> just in case. So why not be the first? That's when I was talking to somebody the other day, um, and it was about an idea, and they were a bit hesitant in getting started in it, and, and they were like, "Well, I don't really want to be known. You know, I don't want to be famous." I was like, "Well, you don't go into something seeking fame." Uh, the, and I, and the, the example I used was. The person who created the computer, I'm sure he wasn't looking fame, but he just became the person who created the computer. It, if you just create it, just create it. Whatever happens, happens. So definitely just go for it, take up the space, see the opportunity, launch off into the deep. And um, yeah, your, it's your impact at the end of the day. It's your story. Awesome. And I think that's very, very sound advice. And it's a beautiful way for us to end our conversation. I am... Um, I, I'm very happy that we connected and I'm hoping that persons, but by the way, before we go, if, if a parent wants to um, reach out to you in terms of the services that you offer, um, tell us what, is it, a, is, it a, is it a tedious process? Is it a simple process? Just give us an idea of what that looks like. Um, I'd like to def uh, describe it as being simple because Simplicity has always been one of my strong points. Mm -hmm. um, and the key thing is that everything is virtual. Uh, so from the sign up process to an immersion program to payment, everything is done online. So in terms of the step-by-step, -step, it simply means going on our website, www.languesol international spelled out, so languesolinternational.com. You look at our programs that are available based off the destination. You fill out the form. Uh, somebody will be in touch with you, whether myself or a partner of mine or another coordinator. Uh, there will be an interview process to see what your goals are because the idea for us is not just to receive applications and send people off. Sometimes people need to know what exactly they're getting themselves into so they can really commit to it. So we have that you know, little interview process. Um, and if you're good to go and we're good to go, we're happy to, to make it happen. So it's quite simple. Awesome. And we will, along with the video, and I'm thinking we'll do some kind of write-up, we will post that kind of information. For first. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to thank you for the fact that you made the time. Why? I don't know. From the other day, I've been talking to the international people. I spoke to <laughs> Iceland. Earlier, I spoke to... I 10 year old in Switzerland. Wow. Now I'm speaking to you in France. <laughs> well, that's, we're long soul international, so we're happy to, to facilitate as well. <laughs> but thank you so much for you know, spending some time and telling us about what you do with, at Langosol. The pleasure is mine. I wish you all the best, and I really hope that eventually, when you're ready, you will get the kind of assistance, the level of assistance um, from the government that I think you need to take this to a very high level. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Leanne, and we will we'll talk. With pleasure. Have talk. a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.